airplane because this guy is going to do more than just spend 300 bucks for a night stay. This guy is spending between 100 to a million plus when he's playing on the casino floor. So Andre, I mean, we got an amazing relationship where they understand once we pick up the phone, I live by these two, by the way, like they don't sleep. I mean, 24 seven, I don't care if it's two o'clock in the morning, if it's 10 a.m. or if it's 5 a.m. If it rings, I tell all my employees, if you don't answer it, they're gonna call somebody else. You lose that job, you lose that business. Now what? You gotta make your job harder. You gotta go out and find more people to offset what you just lost on that call that you didn't answer because you were sleeping or you were partying drinking. I mean, some people still know me around here. I'm out all the time in the city. I mean, I'm out every night. I'll be out till three, four o'clock in the morning. Never know when you're going to run into somebody to bring him down to the casino. Perfect example, Johnny Menzel, when he signed with the, with the football team here, uh, I ran into him. We became friends. He started gambling with me and then he went out. When he left, he left. But it was brand new business for us and Andre took great care of him in the hotel. Is amazing relationships like that help out, but uh, so, so in your world, it, it is a little different when you think of a traditional hotel. The goal is to have the highest room rates, and that's what brings in the revenue. And then hopefully, you pick up a little food and beverage revenue while the guest is there, and that's what makes the hotels run. In the casino industry, the biggest difference is my ideal world, my ideal sell out of the hotel would be if every room was comp which sounds crazy to a standard hotelier because that means you wouldn't be making any money, but in our world, it means we'd be making more money. Because like Romeo said, if I sold somebody a room at $300 a night, or I could bring in a $5,000 player, we'd make more money having the room comp. So it, it's a little bit different. So I'd say on our weekends, we're probably about 80% comp, 20% cash, people that are actually paying for a room. In my ideal world, I would like to be 100% comp and 0% cash on a weekend because that means we would have people in the casino that are playing. Good thing about the location, too, if they're there, there's really not too much else out there. So you have to eat, you have to gamble, you have to do something inside the building. Um, so that would be, that's a big difference between a standard hotel and a casino hotel. One of the other biggest differences is you're dealing with some really high-end customers. So you have to go above and beyond what a standard hotel would do. They just a basic check-in, you get a room, hopefully you have a good time and go home. So if Romeo calls me, anytime I get something from Romeo, I know it's a huge player. They either need a special bottle of wine that we may have to drive and go find because we don't even have it in the state or it may be somewhere else. It, there may be a special request that they want. They want this type of bed, they want special amenities. There's one player that you have that comes in, he always wants protein shakes and he's about 400 pounds. I don't know why he, but we, that's what we do. <laughs> don't ask. We, we, we bring in the protein shakes for them. Whatever they want, we will make it happen. If somebody wants a certain type of cake, when they check in, they're going to have that type of cake. Um, so you're dealing with really high end customers that have really high expectations because they may be a CEO of a company or they may run a business and their expectations are different from a normal traveling customer. So you definitely have to go above and beyond. There may be something that they want in the steakhouse. It's not even on the menu. Then sure, we'll figure man. out a way to make whatever it is. We had somebody come to the steakhouse and they wanted fried rice. That's not traditional at a steakhouse, but we figured out how to get fried rice because that's what they want, shrimp fried rice. So it's those types of things that are different from a standard hotel, whereas you go to a restaurant that's not on the menu, though. So of course it's not something we serve. For us, we'll find out you know, we don't have it, but let's, let's figure out something what we can do. We'll, we'll figure out how we can get it. It's great. There's a lot of situations where if Romeo needs something, we have to pretty much find a way to make it work. The, the other thing that's great about our company is having all these properties around the country. So it gives you a shot. If you don't want to stay in Memphis, you can move to Vegas. If you want to be in Vegas, you can go to Illinois. You can go to Baltimore. You can go to New Orleans. I mean, there's always places that you can work if you don't want to stay in, if you want to move. And everything, I mean, our relationship with, probably we're the only property in the country that we get along with ev all the other properties, just because of our relationships with what we got with other people in the industry. I mean, Andre worked in Vegas, he kept all these relationships that he built, and now if he needs a room last minute in Vegas, he'll pick up the phone, call the GM over there, they're like, done, no problem, we'll take care of it. Where sometimes you be hustling like crazy, trying to do something nuts, 
and it doesn't work. But it, it's, our business is all about the relationship. It's all about catering to people, but at the same time, always be humble and be nice to these guys. No matter how much money they're bringing in, or if they don't have, if it's a hundred dollar player or if it's a million dollar player, treat them like the way you want to be treated. Don't ever look at nobody down. Like that was my biggest thing with my with my employees. Like don't ever laugh because you never know who's walking in that door. Somebody can be wearing a a torn shirt, overhauls, walking in, and all of a sudden he pulls up a wad of fifty thousand dollar cash out of his pocket. So now you treated him wrong. You looked at him like he was nothing. Now you're gonna kiss his ass, try to get that money in the machine. I mean, it's true. It's just, that's why you never never judge a book by its cover. One of my employees learned that. It was, it was tough, but you'll make it right. There's a lot of crazy demands from from gamblers. I mean, there's one gambler that we picked him up. He said, always open the door from the left-hand side. Don't open my door from the right-hand side. You open it from the right-hand side, he was going back to the airport. He's not staying at your place. It's bad luck. They're very superstitious. Some of them want to stack up the chips in a certain way, and you got to pay them that way, in that certain way they stacked up. If you don't, they raise hell, they get off the table, they leave. It just, it's certain crazy. Certain numbers. Uh, oh, yeah. Certain numbers. Uh, a lot of our Asian players, we, we don't, there's no number four at the tables. Uh, four doesn't exist. So if you're sitting at a Baccarat table, there's always one, two, three, six, seven, eight. No four. Four does not exist. Uh, actually, the Wink Casino in Vegas did the best thing ever. They eliminated fourth floor, any floor with a any floor with a number four in it. It's not a doing. If you walk to their elevators, you'll see there's no fours at all. That's because they catered. Their biggest revenue comes from Asian players. It's uh, yeah. You just gotta learn. You gotta learn the specifics of everybody that's coming in. I mean, Middle Easterners are different. You know, they don't want to be seen drinking or partying, but they, they'll do it, they'll gamble, they'll, they'll love it. But at the same time, they like the privacy. Like, I learned that about the Asian culture as well. Koreans are kind of the same way. Korean culture doesn't want to be seen. Where Vietnamese and Chinese are all about, look at me, I'm, you know, it's what I got. And uh, the Amer Americans, it just depends. I mean, it depends <laughs> on the mood, man. Like, <laughs> sometimes they're like, you look at me, like before 2008, before the market crashed, everybody was like, oh, I got more money than you now. Everybody want to be in a private room. I don't want to be seen that I'm making that kind of money because I don't want people knowing my business. Where before it was everybody was flushing everything. So you just got to study. I mean, it's constantly uh, uh, learn in business. You know, it's not like you did it one time. It's good. We can move. It's, I think it's harder than med school. <laughs> <laughs> I would assume that Memphis is as, a, as an area is your largest demand generator. Metro Memphis. It, it is. I mean, it's what thirty percent of of our business, maybe forty. And I mean, a lot of feeder markets to Arkansas, Nashville. You got like yeah, Atlanta, Birmingham, Nashville. Birmingham, all the surrounding areas also come, especially now because we we started sports betting. So before you could only bet on sports in Nevada. Now you can bet on sports in Tunica. So you get people coming from all over because it's one of the closest places to to bet on a football game or basketball game. Do you do an economic analysis of those feeder markets? Absolutely. And how is Memphis doing as compared to some of your other feeder markets? <laughs> they're, they're, they're hanging. I mean, you gotta understand, we got, I think in my opinion, we got more casinos in Tunica than we need. But, you know, I mean, we got nine, nine properties still. Well, there was, an article in the there was an article in the paper last week about, uh, in the business section, so it must have been a Sunday paper, about how, and they didn't say this, they just, they just used their analysis. You know, we've got a, a guy here, not in this, in yeah. the Wilson School, but across the street over in the business that's school, that's some kind of an a analyst, and his numbers show that the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. And there's more, the increase in the number of families making less money is actually, that's, there's more of those coming. And the other end of the economic scale with the richer incomes, there's more of those. And the folks in the middle 
are getting squeezed. And I just wonder if you folks are noticing that. No, nah, not on our not on our business. I mean, the, the only thing we're noticing is we're losing some of the low end play to Southland Park because it's closer to Memphis. So West Memphis is, is closer to, but the big players and, and those, they're not gonna go there because they don't get the limits. Big, big gamblers are looking for what's my max bet can be on the table or what's the highest denomination on a slot machine, right? I, you're not gonna get, if you show a $500 max bet at, a, at Southland Park, the big table player that's willing to risk 10,000 a hand is not gonna go there and play because he doesn't have the volatility where he can either kill you or he's gonna get killed at the same time. And that's the thing that, like when I first started in business, I never understood why somebody will come to a casino, spend half a million dollars to get two free Super Bowl tickets. Right? You just like get the concept. If you have a half a million dollar that you can spend in a casino, why not pay twenty thousand and get those two Super Bowl tickets and enjoy it? You still got four hundred and eighty in the bank, right? But the problem is, they think they can be. They have that mentality. I have a shot at doubling my money. Although I can lose it, but I got a shot at doubling my money. That's why they give you that risk, and that's what one of the rewards we give them. And we'll give them private jets. We'll give them Super Bowl tickets, BCS, the best seats in the house. They'll be on the field before the game. Everything. So all that, to me, they can afford it on their own, but they don't want to do it because they want to say they got it from, they got it for free. Nothing is for free in life. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. In regards to like, having these opportunities for the people who come to your property, 